Now, our next speaker is going to come up here to give a little insight about what it's like to be a woman in and, pub and publish their research, and also what it means to her to be a woman engineer. Please give a hand for Kalina Borhewitz. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, my name is actually pronounced Kalina Borkiewicz. Um, <laughs> nobody ever gets that. Um, I'm from the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. Um, so there's a famous quote from a TV show, Silicon Valley, where a woman says, um, I'm not a woman engineer, I'm just an engineer. I think we can all understand where she's coming from and not needing that qualifier. As women, we, we don't want to be labeled or singled out because of our gender. We just want to be thought of as equals. But I want to argue that you have to be the former before you can be the latter. I recently had to decide if I wanted to be a woman engineer or an engineer when I submitted my first paper for publication in an academic journal. This was my first paper and hopefully the first of many to come. So. I had to decide what do I want to go by professionally for the rest of my career. I could go by my feminine sounding first and middle name, Kalina Maria, or just by my gender neutral initials, KM. This is a decision many women have had to face, and not just in academia either. Just take a look at the literary world. For every Jane Austen or Margaret Atwood, you have a JK Rowling who obscured her gender behind initials, or a Mary Mary, Evan, Mary Ann Evans, um, who wrote under the name George Eliot, or a Nellie Harper Lee, who dropped her feminine first name uh, to write To Kill a Mockingbird. There are many arguments for going gender neutral. In a study where gendered names were randomly assigned to scientific papers, those with feminine names were perceived by reviewers to be of lower scientific quality. Uh, papers authored by men and women are accepted equally if reviews are double-blind, but if they aren't, papers authored by women are accepted significantly less frequently. Papers written by women are cited less often than those written by men. So the choice seems obvious, right? If I go by KM, my work will be judged by its merit and not by its author's perceived gender. Whereas if I go with Kalina, I run the risk of being discriminated against. I want to tell you a story of um, how I got into programming. It was an elective that I took in high school, and my programming teacher, Mr. Solon, was a spectacled white guy in his 30s. So I guess in that sense, you know, your average computer programmer. <laughs> but he was outgoing, and he was funny. He was really funny, and in a witty way, not in that awkward, nerdy, Big Bang Theory kind of way. <laughs> And he had a beard, he had gauges in his ears, and he was covered in tattoos from neck to toe. Um, I didn't think much of it at the time other than in my 16-year-old lingo that maybe he was a bit of a weirdo. But thinking back on it, taking his class was the single most influential thing that happened to me in my professional trajectory. And it wasn't because of the programming he taught me in that class. I probably couldn't even tell you what that was. Um, it was who he was. I had little in common with this tattooed man twice my age, but I could relate to him for a single reason. Neither of us fit the stereotype. And I think we all know what that stereotype is. Pop culture tries to tell us programmers are all white men, basement dwelling and pale, awkward, antisocial, with hobbies that don't include anything other than hacking and poning noobs. <laughs> If that's what an engineer is, I'd much rather be a woman engineer. So, if you think about it, there's not really anybody that fits that description. It certainly doesn't apply to Mr. Solon, certainly doesn't apply to me either. Nobody thinks of themselves as a stereotype, but we tend to accept that judgment as true for others. But if we take a step back and realize that each one of us is a woman engineer or a tattooed engineer, or a Hispanic engineer, an athletic engineer, or an outgoing engineer, we realize that there's so many exceptions that the qualifiers fade away. 
and we all feel like we could be just engineers. If it wasn't for my tattooed teacher just being who he was, just doing his job, but not hiding what it is that made him different, I don't think I'd have the courage to be a woman in STEM today. So I decided that maybe if I decide not to hide what it is that makes me different, I might inspire somebody in the same way that he influenced me. So when it came time to submit that paper, I decided to embrace being a woman engineer, and I chose to go by Kalina. Thank you.